Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, drawing apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge, and today I want to talk about drawing with your iPad. So, drawing is a fantastic activity. It's an activity that we often don't do enough while we start formal uh, schooling, and it's a great thing to do on the iPads. I'm not saying you should replace everything that you do physically on the iPad, totally not. But if you want to do some drawing in the classroom and you want to use apps, you're saving on paper, you're saving on materials, and nothing gets dirty, so you can do it a lot quicker. I would say that you want to play with both media, both in person, with the physical materials and on the iPads and even talk about the differences. The first app I want to talk about is fairly simple and I talked about it before but new features and great new additions make Drawing Carl uh, something you want to think about. So in Drawing Carl as usual you use the plus, you start drawing, you can see the color palette here and you can see that you can actually buy more stuff and uh, one of the things that I love about this is you can try anything for one hour so you get all of these features and you can see if it's something you like and is worth the money or not so that's uh, something you can add but now you can choose your tool and I love the fact that they've enhanced the number of tools they have and you can choose something like a crayon I love the crayon effect uh, Let's choose a color and you can see that this is a crayon effect and I can draw with it and then you can use a different tool, let's say um, a pencil in red, I'll make a, a house, you can use a brush effect and you can choose a how pronounced it'll be, let's use that. You can see that that has that bleeding effect and that that uneven effect is really fun to play with and you can see how you can uh, use that to uh, create something more complete and you can see how you can use a more a controlled colors and this is an airbrush effect so you can create that kind of an effect and you can see that you can play with it and do some very interesting things as you're creating. You can also see that I'm not uh, necessarily one of the best artists that are out there, but I keep on trying and, um, and I keep doing interesting things and liking what I do. There is an undo button so you can remove and you can put back. So, and, and that has two aspects to it. It's a great way for kids to not be afraid to try new things and then take them off if they don't like them. But even more so, it's a way to discuss the process of creating by going back and forth and explaining to others, other students or your teacher, or to the teacher to explain to students how they've created this uh, piece. Once you're done, you can go back to uh, your drawing and then you can see that you can put it in photos, you can email it or you can use uh, Facebook which most of our students don't have and that's okay but lots of ways to share that drawing with others and that's a great way to get kids to start drawing. Now I've got two more apps and those are apps that actually have a somewhat more sophisticated ways to create on the iPad and each one of them has some great features. Uh, let's start with My Brushes Pro. So My Brushes Pro actually has a set of devices that can connect to it and actually use Bluetooth to create. So it's got a variety of styluses and different things that can help create but you can also create everything on the screen. It's got a few features that uh, the previous app doesn't have including the ability to work in layers so this is the ability to work in layers and layer your artwork like we do in um, Adobe and so you can do some more sophisticated drawing and some more uh, sophisticated work from that perspective you can also see that there's a great variety of uh, different tools to use from brushes to pencils, pens, airbrush, and scroll. So uh, let's just look at the brushes uh, here. You can see that again you have lots of options within that. Let's choose this one. You can see that effect 
And so now I've picked that one. I can pick um, a color. So I can pick the different brushes and uh, the different effects, sorry. And then I can pick the color on this scale. And you can actually create colors that you're interested in. So now you can see how this brush and this effect is going with the color that I chose. And you see how sensitive it is to the touch. Working with a stylus would make it even better. But uh, this is something that you can definitely so see and do. And you can see that you can also use mirroring. So you can uh, do something like uh, this that replicates everything you create on one side. It's a great way, by the way, to connect art and uh, graphics with geometry and thinking about the concepts of symmetry. Um, that's one way to do it. You can, of course, do it on multiple planes. So I can create something as complex as this. And now it'll diverge on the center. And it can create this beautiful art that uh, kids can play with, but also think about how that affects everything they do. And again, you can use different colors to create this. So this one is called My Brushes Pro. Um, I just touched on it. There's a depth of features that you can use in there, and I recommend that you try it out. Uh, My Brushes Pro is another program that allows you to do similar things. It allows you to explore color, shape, and uh, ways of working with it. And the one features that I love about this is it has some art that was created on the iPad using this program. You can see that there are different pieces of art. And the wonderful thing about them is there's actually a short movie that shows how it was created. It's speeded up. But it shows you how, from very basic shape and very rough drawing, you draw something very specific and a very realistic. So I'll give you this example. And you can see how the artist, in this case, starts with general background, just layering the colors, and then starting to create the shapes all the way till you get a very detailed final drawing. So you can see how the general shape of the dragon is created. It doesn't look like much, but as they go through it, it becomes more and more pronounced. Uh, different effects are added. And you can talk about how the different colors create the illusion of the direction of light, um, shadow, and a level of detail as you go along. And I'm not going to play the whole thing. What I recommend is get the app and watch a few of these. They're fantastic. So this is the final uh, art piece. And it is just, at least to me, mesmerizing to watch the process. Now, you can start with a blank canvas. And you can do just like in all the other ones. You can slowly uh, create using new tools. So you can activate specific tools. You can put more color or less color. You can change uh, the kind of brush you're using and the saturation. You can decide more precisely than the other ones on a percent of how dry it is, how opaque it is, if there's any effect, a stylus effect in this case. And that changes the look. You can change the colors up here in this corner. And you can create custom colors so you can come back to them. And you can change the tools. So lots of tools to create drawing. And again, the ability to play how others have created it and get a sense of how artwork can be created in a layered fashion on the iPad. So today, on iPads in the Classroom, we talked about a few ways to engage with the artist within and help kids develop this capacity to play and create and think through their creation. Also, great ways to connect it to other ways of thinking, thinking about perspective, thinking about light, and thinking about symmetry. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.